Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're jumping back in the H-Jet now that we're on version 1.0.4, and we have to redo everything we did for the Logitech multi-panel. So as you can see, we're here on the ground in lovely CYOW. We got some wind gusting down the runway and the clouds are out. So let's go ahead and jump in as we're ready to go to Kingston. So as you can see, we've already set in our flight plan. We've already got our departure and we've already got our approach uh, that we're planning for dialed in just to make our sight a little bit easier. So we're going to go ahead and get on the flight director. And we do have the flight director mapped to the auto throttle. So of course, on the departure out of Ottawa, you fly runway heading. So we're going to hold down. Well, first what we'll do is we'll dial our heading away. We're going to hold down the heading button so that it syncs our current heading. Then what we're going to do, because on this departure, you go up to 4,000 in jet aircraft and it, you'll notice the acceleration works well. So we go ahead and we set 4,000 and we're gonna fly runway heading. But of course, we are gonna use the toga mode. Sure. All right, let's go ahead and get going with our autopilot control. So we got our park and brake on. We're gonna go ahead and start bringing up the power and we're gonna hit that toga button so take off take off we're gonna go to toga I'm gonna release the brake and make sure our flaps are in the takeoff position which they are we're looking for that v1 and that rotate there we are and rotate And 130, let's go ahead, get our gear up, and let's go ahead and get our flaps up. Since we're doing this for autopilot, let's go ahead and get our autopilot on. So it is going to fly that. And now as we would transition into heading, we're going to fly that runway heading at this point, continuing up our climb. Now we would have made contact and of course they may have said something like turn heading uh, 240 direct on course uh, Lorca. So we could come to our heading and we could start our turn. And then of course we could enable nav mode which is gonna go ahead and pick up the FMS. And now that we've gone through our IAS speed of 210 for the climb, we're going to grab speed 210 and it's going to climb up for 4000. At this point, they would have cleared us all the way up to 18. Or I think I said 16 in our flight plan. We'll go to 16. So we've gone ahead and we've dialed that up to 16. And it's letting us know currently that our yaw damper's off, which we've gone ahead and placed on the flap up for yaw damper. Clicking on the knob display, of course, the first thing that comes up is our autopilot for altitude, because that's what the knob is set to. So here you can see that we have got the display running off the standard display autopilot altitude lock variable. So now that things have changed, it's using the default variable, uh, we're good to go. Below that, you're going to see that we've got on a clockwise turn, we're going to send the autopilot altitude variable increment command and the variable decrement commands. And what you'll see is as those com commands come in with speed, uh, it will do the acceleration and you'll climb by thousands instead of one hundreds. So moving the knob to VS and clicking on the screen again, you'll see that with VS, we are displaying the expression result, which is to take the 
pitch hold reference to Greece and I'm multiplying by negative 10 because I need to flip it and invert it so that pitch up is positive, pitch down is negative. For some reason in the sim, those are backwards. And by multiplying by 10, I can go from 9.1 degrees to 91. And the purpose for that is so that we can change the display to show us 0 0. And so we want that so that we'll see the pitch. When the display, or we're in VS mode, it's going to instead display the vertical hold var. And while we've got that selected, the knob is now going to use the AS1000 MFD nose up and nose down command because those seem to work perfect for us. Meaning if we're in pitch mode, it'll move the pitch bar. And if we are in VS, it's going to increment and decrement that value. So those key events under the hood still work perfect. Uh, so we're going to stick with those. Switching our knob over to IAS or speed mode, we're referencing whether or not the XMR val for airspeed is mock. If it's a zero, we're going to show the airspeed hold value. If it's a one, we're going to show the mock value. Now, for mock value, what we've actually done is we've said, hey, do me a favor, multiply by a thousand uh, so that we can display it on the screen since you can't do decimals. So on the clockwise turn, you're getting the speed var increment and speed var decrement on counterclockwise, which works perfect whether you're in mock speed or you're in IAS speed. And we better slow up. We're down here at 16,000. We're going to hit overspeed real quick. So when we look at heading, you're going to see that for heading, we're checking the autopilot heading lock direction variable. And again, we're using the heading bug increment and heading bug decrement commands. Uh, those work great. And if you spin, they spin faster. Finally, on course, we're doing something a little bit different in that we're going to display the course three different ways. Uh, if GPS drives nav one, what that really means is here your active nav is FMS. Then we're going to show you the GPS uh, desired track that we're supposed to be flying, 228, which is actually the exact value that will show up here on the PFD in the course. However, if you're on NAV1, then what we're going to display for you is the OBS1 value, which again, this course value would be showing. Finally, if you've got uh, NAV2 selected, then we're going to show you NAV OBS2. And again, that would be showing here in this display, but they're actually different variables. So we want to display those same variables. Now, the other thing we do is when autopilot nav selected one, meaning when this is set to nav one, uh, we're going to increment and decrement uh, the OBS course value for nav one. When it's a two, we're going to change nav two. So as you can see, uh, really cool that we can just change it based on what we've set for our CDI. Now that we've got those things out of the way, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at the buttons. So autopilot master, uh, when you turn that on, sets the autopilot master to on. Uh, some people have chosen to put flight director here and use the auto throttle for something else. I chose to use the auto throttle for the flight director. Heading mode, now heading mode uses standard heading lock variables and you send the heading hold value. I threw in the AS1000 PFD heading sync key event uh, so that we get that functionality as well. Note we're coming up, we're going to be headed down to 1800 feet it looks like. So if we just check while we're doing this, uh, no, we want um, put tud at 18, so we'll go ahead for up this at 1700 feet. So as you see, as we spin fast, it knows to do So there we go. We're at 1,700 feet. And in preparation, you're going to see that the back course hold button is what was implemented for VNAV. 
So let's go ahead and arm our VNAV. So there you go, VNAV would be armed. We're waiting for the top of descent to come in. Uh, and then we would go ahead and start our way down. Pretty cool. Uh, of course, you can also do this the old fashioned way. You don't need to use VNAV. We can use good old vertical speed. So with that in mind, we're going to switch to vertical speed mode. So you'll also see that that changed to vertical speed. And then if we zoom in a little bit, as we set our pitch down, because that's what we also assign the wheel to, or we come to the VS and we do it this way. But as we do this, we can see the banana. And as we bring that banana in, it shows us where we're going to be right there, where we're going to be when we come out at 1700 feet. So we can go ahead and extend our banana a little bit since we want about putt-tud or obtis. So somewhere around there, we're going to let it drop down. The other thing we can do is start to pull back on the speed. And as we do that, the banana is also going to come in back over to here. So heading, we covered those portions. Nav mode. So again, nav lock one. If that variable goes on, the lights go on. And now nav one hold is the standard command that has been interpreted. I put flight level change on IAS mode and we set the variables for flight level change. Note, we also added that if you hold for one second, it will send the airspeed on command, which is the equivalent of the CSC cruise control mode. See the other videos for how that works. Finally, altitude on this stretch. So again, altitude lock is the standard variable now, and altitude hold is the standard variable. For somewhere to put it, I chose the long press of altitude to swap us between manage speed in mock toggle. So that's like pressing the speed knob to switch to mock speed. Uh, obviously, you do it at a certain altitude, and that's why I chose to put it on that button uh, since we had cruise control set on the IAS button. VS mode, we've already showed you how that works. It's now tied to the standard vertical hold variable and you send the autopilot vertical speed hold. Approach mode is set up the same as it was, uh, or maybe not, but it's set up the same as what you would do for anything else now. Approach hold zero, approach hold one, and we go with autopilot approach hold is the event that we send into the sim. So all that is following along nicely. And then as mentioned for VNAV, we are having to use a couple of LVARs uh, just because those LVARs track it better. Um, and we've got the back course hold, which is the event that was chosen uh, to be intercepted. As mentioned on the flaps, we've got the yaw damper toggle, nothing on the bottom that's available for you. And then we've got the auto throttle assigned to the flight director. And then finally, you've got pitch trim, which I've got the AS1000 nose up, nose down event set to. So again, that will work with pitch mode or VS. Sometimes it's nice to have it on a wheel, just like it's a wheel in the cockpit. So that's why I put it there as well. Obviously, you can change it up uh, if that's something that you don't like. Because it is activate leg. Okay. All right. So now that we've activated the leg, let's go ahead and put the autopilot back on. And let's go ahead and arm the approach again. And we've, looks like we've captured the uh, glide path dot but it went into altitude. So I'm gonna hit approach again and hit it again. There we go. So we had to press the approach key again. So we had to go blink, blink, 
and then it grabbed it again. So that was a little weird that it fell back into altitude even though it showed the diamond is captured. Uh, of course now that we're below 140, let's bring that down and let's go ahead and put our gear out. And performance, speed bugs, let's go pick up our landing data. And we can see we want to speed up just a little bit for our V approach speed. Let's get rid of that yaw damper. Put that nose down. Yikes! Bounce. A little bit of a bounce. Well, on that note, we might as well call it a day. Hit that like button. Smash the subscribe. And come along next time. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.